Thank you. Hi, Jürgen. Um, Hi. Mohamed Salah was on the score sheet again today. He's had a really good week. Was it kind of a reminder to the rest of the Premier League that while other teams are going out and trying to fight for the best centre forwards in Europe, essentially Liverpool have got that in their Salah? No. We were not here today for uh, sending any kind of signs to the outside world. Uh, we were here to fight a real strong Crystal Palace team. Uh, that was really a tough one. Um, we could have scored from other situations, but didn't, so we needed our set pieces. Uh, that Mo scored it should not be a massive surprise. Uh, Sally scored a nine time in the row against Crystal Palace, which is exceptional. He scored his one on the goal for Liverpool in all competition. It's exceptional. So Naby Keita scored the most wonderful goal of all three. So um, that's all important for us. But it, I told the boys after the game, this was one of the most hard for three nil I ever saw. We had to give absolutely everything. And um, so I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased because when you, when uh, in a season, when you're Liverpool, you win football games from time to time. Most of the, when you win, usually you are really good or brilliant. Today we were not brilliant, but we're good. And we, we, we took the, or we accepted the battle uh, Crystal Palace was here for. Um, and that's why I'm really happy about the result, really happy about the performance. Um, this Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday rhythm is just the most tricky one in the Premier League. Um, and so we came through that now for the moment. Very important with all the changes we had to make and some or one we didn't want to make, but that worked out really well with Millie on right back. So, um, no, was not brilliant, but really good, and I like that. Okay, thank you, Emma. We'll go to Chris Bascom from The Telegraph, and then to Carl Markham from PA. Chris. Can you hear me, Mark? Yeah, yeah. all good. Um, just a few more words on Sadio. Yeah, can you didn't mention him there, but just his immense contribution. To, he's, I think he's only 18 Liverpool players. have got 100 goals, and over five years, he's just contributed so much. He did. He did. So, um, and... But obviously people then forget that around these 100 goals he worked incredibly hard. <laughs> um, defended for us, the wing, um, pressed high, counter-pressed, um, created goals, set up goals, set up chances, all the kind of stuff. So the 100 goals are just for one number. There are so many other numbers which are similar important. But I'm really happy for him that he could reach that today. And um, so, yeah, massive achievement. In this glorious history of this club, only 18 players, if that's right, scored 100 goals. That says a lot because um, nowadays players are usually not that long in clubs. So I'm really happy that I could work now for already for five years together with that. And um, yeah, it's just a, a top player. James Chris, thank you. We've got to Carl Markham, then to James Pierce. Carl. Hi, Jürgen. Hi, Carl. Uh, four changes in the week, six changes today. What does that say about the depth of your squad that you can uh, come and get results like this? Yeah, I don't know what it says exactly, but we had to do the changes. Um, that was clear. Um, the house had this morning um, after breakfast. Um, Trent didn't feel right. Uh, we actually planned to start him, but um, uh, Millie did an incredible job. Um, I'm pretty sure he enjoyed that game today. So that's good. <laughs> and um, yeah, so then the whole last line now, all of a sudden, new, never play together, never. And um, uh, on top of that, yes, Thiago, of course, but I think the midfield played only once together before. Um, so interesting as well, the front three, they, they know, they knew each other, let me say it like this. So uh, for that, it was really good, but we had to do it. You, you, you saw... Um, the intensity of the game, we, we had to pay for that as well. It was second half, we were not that clear anymore. We scored the goals, yes, but we were not that clear anymore. In the end, to the end of the second half, Crystal Palace really um, yeah, put an extra shift in, brought more offensive players, chipped the balls in behind our fullbacks. We had to run a lot. You can impress these balls, obviously, you have to run a lot. We had to defend it either with skill or luck and Ali. Um, but we did it, and um, so for for the moment, I'm really happy. The only little bit this time overshadowed by Thiago, but we hope all well, that's not that serious. He felt his calf, um, and now we hope really that uh, it's not that serious. Brilliant. Okay, James Pearson, and we finish with Paul Joyce. James. Hi, Jürgen. Um, can I just ask you about uh, Canate's debut? 
um, you, you must have been delighted with the way he, he fitted in today. And just what, what has it been like for him? You know, has there been an adaptation period for him to adjust to the, the style of play and exactly what you want from him? Yeah, definitely. That's very important. So I think we also what kind of potential the boy has. It's incredible. Physicality, technique, um, game understanding, it's all there. But when you're know, as a young boy already skilled, like obviously Ivo is, then you rely sometimes on on, on these skills. And um, they are and now in the, the Premier League teach you then harsh lessons. Um, like and today was a good example for um, Crystal Palace playing there with first Benteke, then Eduard, Saha all the time, cutting inside, Are you around. So that's proper. These are proper strikers and uh, he did really well. But of course, when you play your first game, maybe it's not so nice when you play then a completely new last line. But together with Wirtz and Billy on his side, it worked really well. Costas played top game as well. So it worked well. But there's a lot more to come from him. He's, uh, he's still young and... Um, Yes, he has to, of course, that's how you they all had to adapt to all the, all the way we play um, and to the league, of course, as well. That's, that's a special league here. And, and he's, he's in a really good way. I'm really happy about the process. And then Paul Joyce to finish our press conference. Paul. Yeah, Gunnar, are you committed to rotating more this season? Have you gone into the season with the mindset that you will rotate more often? Yeah, I think we did in the past as well, but maybe if you ask me like this, um, then maybe not often enough, I don't know. Um, it's like you want to line up the best the best possible team and that has obviously different different um, factors. One is who play together. It's, it's, we, today it was rhythm or freshness. We decided for freshness, so that's how it is. Otherwise, we could have played one or the other um, again. We didn't want that. We, um, Joel is not injured or anything. We just left him completely out of the squad that, has, that we don't get in danger to bring him on or whatever. Um, so then, obviously, trend was we planned to bring him, but now um, that's sorted as well. Uh, so that's it. We, we will rotate. We always rotate it. But um, you see in the last line, um, in the last years, we couldn't rotate really um, because there were almost maximum two fit very often. Um, and the third one was already a midfielder. Uh, in midfield, hopefully we have the numbers to do. We need that because I said it before the game, this is the engine room of the team. We need to make changes there. Um, and up front, we have different opportunities as well. And um, so that's good. How often we'll do it. I didn't make a plan yet already for the season, but um, as often as necessary and possible. Brilliant. Thanks everyone. Have a safe journey home and thank you.